Hey everybody, Mr. Mall here. Welcome to our video on fingerprints for murder at Old Fields. I'm going to give you a warning right now. This is the lab that you will probably spend the most amount of time on, and you will start to realize why we have very expensive computer systems that help us identify different fingerprints. And that's when someone gets arrested for a felony crime, they upload your fingerprints into this computer system. So if you were to commit a crime 20 years down the road, they would have your prints. So we're going to go through that. We are not computers. We're going to go through it the old school way. So let's take a look. So I'm going to select lab. I'm going to go to fingerprints. Um, and on the left, I'm going to select Rebecca. Okay. So I just chose a random one. What we have here is we're given her left thumb and left index finger. Okay. So if you look at your left thumb and your left index finger, Honestly, this is the, these are the two things I have out in front of me when I do this. One, I have the classroom lesson of the fingerprinting open as well. So if I go up here, my, once again, my the top of my screen looks a little different because I have the teacher version. I'm going to click and hold on classroom, and I'm going to open my classroom. Open and press it right in a new window. That way I can split screen right here and I can click on where's fingerprint, fingerprint lesson. So now I have my fingerprint lesson open as I go through the lab because some of these get tough. Like down here for loops, how do I know if it's a radial or ulnar loop? Okay, so this is where it gets really tricky. For this video, I'm going to close off this screen, but I highly suggest you have. So that's the first thing I have open. The second thing I have in front of me is my actual hands to take a look at. Because here we have Rebecca Smith's left thumb and left index finger. Looking at the direction some of these fingerprints go is really important. So trying to figure out between an ulnar loop or a radial loop just depends on which way it's facing. Is it facing kind of the inside of the arm or the outside of the arm? The radius and the ulnar are the bones of your arm. So that's why they're called that way because they face a different bone in the hand. So now you're starting to get why they're called that way. But what we have to do is identify what type of prints everybody has. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, move over, Click it 400 times to move over. So left thumb here. All right. So down below, I'm going to go through my whole list of what do I think it is. Is it an arch? Well, I have two arches to choose from. Is it a loop? I have two loops to choose from. Is it a whirl? I have one, two, three, four whirls to choose from. So this is why it's good to have the class, the classroom lesson open as well, so you can help narrow it down. All right. You'll probably be able to narrow it down to the broad type. So like loop, arch, or whirl, but you, uh, figuring out ulnar, radial, double loop, um, central pocket, whirl, like those things, you'll probably need the classroom open. So now I'm going to open up a random piece of evidence, fingerprint, east room, window. Okay. So now I'm going to compare these. So for the piece of evidence, I have to figure out once again, what type of fingerprint it is. And then I have to identify whose it is. So that one is more of a matching game. Okay, so if I look here, these two fingerprints on the left, on the left, could they be it? Possibly, they look generally alike. Not 100% sure. I'm gonna go to Henry, I'm gonna zoom in on his. Um, they don't look extremely alike, but maybe. Um, I will let you know, some of these are gonna look very similar, multiple people and you really have to start looking at the really tiny details or what's called the minutia details of the fingerprints of trying to find where the ridges might split. So up here, oh, go up. I'm gonna use my little red dot here. So if you look at just above the top arrow there of that little circle, oh, we see there's a ridge that ends just in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so that's a minutia detail that we should be able to see in the other fingerprints. If we can't see it, it's not their fingerprint. Okay, so that's one of the tough things about this, and that's what's going to take you the most amount of time. You'll be able to narrow it down pretty well, um, but then sometimes deciding between one or two people is tough. So, this is why fingerprinting is 
pretty difficult. But this is also why fingerprints are kind of the gold standard. DNA is now kind of the best, but fingerprints in the past have been really clutch at getting people and being able to put them at the scene of the crime. Because if we have your fingerprint, you were there at some point in time. We just got to see if you were there at the time of the crime. Because you also have to remember, all the suspects in this crime, it, they were they have a purpose for being in this house. Okay, They either worked there, they stopped by to try to sell something, or they were the victims. So their fingerprints at this crime scene were not, it, it's not the smoking gun, as we say. It just puts them at the scene. But if we find a fingerprint on the bloody axe, well, then they got some explaining to do. Okay, so good luck on the fingerprinting one. Remember, have the classroom open as well, the lesson for this open as well, and take a look at your hand as, uh, as you go through this. It really helps because the classroom will tell you or show you on the right hand, but a lot of the evidence is on the left hand, and it gets flipped around. So that's why it gets tough. Good luck, guys. Take your time on this one. It does take some time. Um, and let me know if you have any issues. See ya.